we were in a wood north of here, um, about a half an hour outside of Copenhagen. And it was the first day of the sun coming out in the spring, and it, it promoted the, uh, the exodus of the ants from their nest for the first time of the year. So we scooped them up with a bucket, and we stuck them in there, put a lid on, and came back to the lab the same day, and uh, blast froze them to death, I'm afraid. Um, but that means that we kept them most of the freshness in. Um, and so these are Formica rufa wood ants. They're very, very sour. Um, they were very, very angry about being taken, but there were millions and millions of them, so hopefully it's okay. And we'll serve them, uh, sitting on a little block of juniper wood, which we'll be smoking. So you'll have a beautiful smell of juniper wood. Take this and eat it like this. Like, that, like a chimpanzee. Um, so I'm just whittling down the sticks and going through them and finding some rotten ones and some good ones. It's just larvae at the moment, so I'm just trying to break it down and then I'm going to uh, add some smoked hazelnut milk and we're going to make a little mousseline from that. The wax moth larvae has uh, a, sort of, uh, a sort of integral sweetness, so yeah, we're going to be cooking that at a low temperature and trying to achieve a very light, delicate mousse. Um, so this is an example of processing the insects um, to try to make them palatable. We're passing it through a very fine uh, micron sieve to basically extract the, uh, the body without the, um, without the fibrous part of the, uh, the wax moth. So this will discard, uh, it doesn't have a lot of flavour. So this is the juice that we use to make the, uh, the mousseline. It's the actual body of the wax moth larvae, which we've mixed with a little bit of hazelnut milk, smoked hazelnut milk. I'm trying to make a broth from the crickets. So, um, we started just, just to try and extract the purity of flavour of, and present one insect with its really wonderful uh, integral flavour. Um, not hiding behind anything, you know, really trying to be as pure as possible. So we've done lots of trials on stocks over the last few weeks, um, cooking in different methods um, to find the best way to, to kind of take the flavour out. Um, so we found that roasting them develops uh, a, a sort of biscuity sort of flavour. So that's what we've been doing. We found the best way and the time and temperature to, to roast them and then infusing that into, into water. This is bee brood, so it's honeycomb from a beehive, and it doesn't have honey in it, well it has a little bit of honey in it, but it mostly has bee larvae in it, which are like the, the, the babies before they hatch. Um, this, is what, this is what it looks like. That's a little larva, it's white. You can sort of, actually that's sort of starting to pupate, you can see that it's starting to separate into uh, there's the abdomen, the thorax, the head, and some legs there too. So this is this is sort of into the next uh, pupa stage, and this one is basically an adult bee that's just about to hatch. The hard part is that uh, we have to separate it all out from the comb because you can see like this, it's it's that's all larva in there. Right there. <coughs> so what we need to do, we found that the best way is just to take some liquid nitrogen and put them in the liquid nitrogen, and they just freeze solid, very cold. And the wax also gets very cold, so you can just rub the wax off of them. This is frozen right now, but when it comes up to room temperature, the honey will become really soft. Um, the larva will all take on that really luxurious, soft quality. Um, and so we'll serve them in little squares with the honey, the pollen, and the bee larva all in there together. And you sort of have to like find you know, which parts you're gonna eat and when, and mix things together. They're very different flavors, but they're all delicious, and they all work together.